you know, you hear a lot about media, film, the movies, but does anybody ever tell you how to break into that? How do you get a job there, right, Mr. Lopez? Did anybody tell you, like, this is what you got to do? You might think, like, oh, go to school. But it, it, it's not that simple, right? You need to know tricks of the trade, right? So Mr. Arzola is here to share with us what his experience has been to hopefully inform you, inspire you, maybe motivate you, you know, to pursue a career in media um, or in the film industry. Okay, that is the purpose of our Q&A session today. Okay, um, so without further ado, I'm going to give the spotlight over to Mr. Axel Arzola. He is a director and producer. Can we welcome him? <laughs> Tell us about your background, you know, where you, where you come from, where you grew up. Tell us about yourself. Sweet. So I was uh, born and raised in Cuba, in Havana. I would spent there all my life, and I came to America in 2012. And I came to America through via Canada. I went to a film festival, and then I made a run for the border, defected, became a refugee, and that's how I came to America. So I went to school and studied film. Uh, I was always obsessed with movies since I was a kid, like movies all day long. So that's why I wanted to pursue a career in film. And of course, coming to Hollywood, you know, it's like the place where everyone wants to come and make movies here. So I came to LA about three years ago and I've been working on uh, TV shows and movies for different studios. So I work with uh, NBC, Sony, Amazon, Apple TV. And at this moment, I'm working as a creative producer for a studio called Impact Theory. We have a big uh, YouTube channel with over 3 million subscribers. We do a lot of content and we create for all kinds of platforms. I've been able to work with a lot of artists, done a lot of music videos. I worked on a project with Bad Bunny and we have been just everywhere making uh, movies and like making content. And I bet you guys are all day like on Instagram, on YouTube. So I do a lot of content for those platforms too, but also create content for more like long form Apple TV and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome. Amazing trajectory, so much experience um, in so many different areas. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your documentary? That yes. You, that you produce? Yes, so my, my second feature film is called Literary Inc. And it's a documentary about tattoos and Harry Potter. So we interviewed and follow a few artists, uh, and especially one of my best friends from Cuba. We went to Cuba and filmed like, his whole story of like, getting out of Cuba and how he became a, an artist and then a tattoo artist. We had another girl from Australia that makes this amazing, beautiful like, back pieces. And then we follow some artists from Oakland, from Tennessee. And yeah, it was super fun experience. And we're, we were able to finish the film, which is always like super hard to finish like a full movie. And we have it now on Apple TV and Amazon Prime. And it's one of the, the projects that I'm most proud of. That's amazing. And so we actually have a clip. Um, so we're gonna see the clip from Literary Inc., okay? Just like approaching any tattoo, whether it's large or small, I don't really have anything in my head. My biggest fear in life is to fail at the Gold Flamingo. At this point, he's tattooing probably six days a week, and sometimes we can't make him stop. Wanting to get the what has pushed me so hard, nobody thought I could. Harry Potter is one of those things that's very important to a lot of folks. You can look up their Instagrams and you're just seeing Harry Potter after Harry Potter after Harry Potter. I think with any shop owner, they would rather die in their shop than retire. It would honestly crush me because I've started this, I want to finish it. If you want to be better as an artist, find people that are better and keep pushing to make yourself better. You want to always be learning. If you're not learning, you're dying. The 
This has been utterly amazing. I have never been so proud of the team that I work with. So just to reiterate, um, you can find this on either Apple TV or Amazon Prime if you'd like to rent it and check it out. Um, I saw it. It's a really great documentary, especially if you are a Harry Potter fan. Okay, it's really, really great, um, really great movie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Um, so we're going to jump into the Q&A session. So I have several questions lined up for Axel. Um, there's two questions per slide, so you can follow along um, with the slide presentation, okay? Um, and we're going to start with, with Axel's educational background, okay? Um, so you mentioned that you are from Cuba. You grew mm -hmm. up in Cuba. I want to yes. say Cuba. Because my friends have said it's not Cuba, it's Cuba. Cuba yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to stick with Cuba. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So it, in Cuba, and so you came here when you had already graduated high school, or were yes. you a college graduate at that time already, or yeah. what was your educational background? So when I was in Cuba, I went to a, like a technical school and I got a degree in computers. So I always love computers. I'm a huge nerd. That's what I always loved. And, but I also loved movies and then I got introduced to design and so I did my computer degree and then I went to the army for two years. So in Cuba, every male, uh, when you turn 18, you have to go to the army for two years. Everyone has to do it. So I did that and then after that, uh, I just went into work as a media director at a big church. And I've been doing videos like forever there, so they offered me a job and then I became the media director. So it was a lot of like self-taught. I taught myself how to edit, how to shoot, how to write, how to direct. Uh, I did a lot of theater when I was like a kid. So that gave me a lot of experience and I directed some plays and that gave me a lot of experience because you're basically mixing, you know, to make films, you're mixing performance and technology. So you can capture the performance and that's kind of how you make the stuff. So I took some classes about film theory and uh, story structure, editing. So I, I did a lot of on my own. And then when I came to America, that's when I went to a, a, an actual school and I went to college and I did a, a four year program at a, a conservative school. And that's where I kind of learned how to really write, uh, mm -hmm. how to, do a lot of marketing things. I learned a lot about like American culture in general because I didn't know anything about that like growing up in, in a different country. So, so you knew, question number one is how did you know you wanted to pursue a career in film? But you already knew. Yes, in my case, I started doing my first videos when I was like 15, 16. It wasn't like a career at that moment. And like for you guys, you might not be thinking about a career. Like right now, I think you should focus on what do you like? Like, do you like playing with cameras? Do you, or do you like something else? Like, whatever it is that you like, you can probably find a way later on how to make it a career, but you have to get good at it first. So I wouldn't worry too, like, how old are you guys right now? 15, 16. 16. So you probably don't want to get a job right now. You're, you're probably not thinking about that specifically. So I would focus on, like, what are you interested in? What are, what are your like passions, things that you like to do. And then I'm pretty sure we can find ways to make money doing that, which, you know, that's kind of the dream for everyone. Yeah, to, to be able to earn money doing what you love. Yeah. Right. Good. And, and you mentioned that you learned a lot of things on your own. Can mm -hmm. you tell us what were you tapping into or what was your source of knowledge that you were using to yeah. self-educate? So in the way that I grew up, we didn't have access to the internet. Uh, we couldn't Google anything. We didn't have YouTube or anything like that. So for us, what happened was I wanted to make a video, right? So I wanted to go and make this video for like all my friends. And I was like your age. And we found how can I borrow a camera? So we borrow a camera from someone. And then I just had an idea. Like I wanted to go around and ask other kids in the street, ask them about music. like. Why do you like hip hop or reggaeton or like whatever music you like? Who's your favorite artist and why? And like try to dig in and ask them like, what, what is it with music that you like? So 
I think when you have an idea and you just try to find how to execute that idea, you will find to me that that is the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. If you just sit all day and you're trying to do something, uh, just learn for the sake of just learning, it's not as enjoyable. Like if tomorrow you want to make a, a video for your YouTube channel and you don't know how to do like the intro with your name for the, for, for the channel, that is probably the best way that you're going to learn to do some motion graphics because then you're going to be like, oh, I want to make this cool intro. So I'm just going to Google or ask a friend, hey, how do you do those cool letters that come in with lights and stuff? So by trying to do a project with an end, like end goal in mind, I found that that was the best way that I could learn because then I have a specific goal. Like I want to learn how to do this because I want to make this cool effect. And in the way, you're going to find so many like problems and things that don't work. And that's how actually you're going to learn how to do all of these things that then you're going to use for your next project and your next project. It sounds like you learned from life, <laughs> like from yeah. real experiences, working with people and problem solving, mm -hmm. being resourceful and pragmatic, using what you have, what was in front of you. And that's, that's an incredible, incredible um, way to learn. Yeah. But let me let me ask you this: When you were here in Tennessee, you said yes. Um, what school did you attend in Tennessee? It what was called it? Lee University okay. in Chattanooga. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and what was your major? I majored in. Uh, it was at the time it was telecommunications, and then halfway through my time there, it switched to like uh, digital media, with an emphasis in cinema. So you went from telecommunications to digital media digital and that media. was just the name like our classes were kind of the same uh, I guess college it takes a little bit for things to adapt to the new names of things so it, we were basically doing film so you didn't switch majors no. they just they changed the name of the program yeah oh, so okay. when I got to the college they were just about to start their media program and they halfway like on my sophomore junior year they opened this new facility it was like a Ten million dollar facility. It was like full broadcast studio. We had full green room, like with green screens, editing bays. So they went all in, and I, I was really lucky that I got to that college. It, this was in 2012. I got there right at the time that they were doing that switch. That's awesome. Um, and the third question is, what were some experiences outside of school? that may have contributed to your skills development and expertise? I don't know if you want to elaborate on what yeah. you've already shared. Well, kind of going on the same topic that I was talking before, I think the first video I made when I got to the US, it was a, a music video for Kia Motors, the car company. So I was talking to some friends on, like about doing this video, and then I open my YouTube and I see that, oh, Kia has this contest that if you make a music video, like you can win a car. So I was like, that sounds wow. cool. <laughs> so I had an idea for the, like the car thing and I just put together a bunch of friends and this was actually for an assignment for a class. I had to make a video. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna make a video for the class, I'm gonna make a video for something real. I don't wanna make some random thing that doesn't like do anything. So I talked to a, a few friends, put a bunch of little kids together. So my concept for the video was, I'm going to have this like four or five year old kids. They're walking around the street, acting all cool and stuff. And they think that they're better than anyone else, right? So then we have the car pulls up and when the window rolls down, it's a little baby. So I have my friend, he had a baby, like the baby was like four months old or something like that. So the baby, like we put his little hand on the wheel and we put some sunglasses on him. So like the whole concept was like, you know, this baby is flexing on these older kids. And then we ended the, the music video with like this big garage party and like the little baby was a DJ. So we had a lot of fun making that video. And then we won the contest and we won the car. So it was hey, really fun. You won a Kia? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's awesome. Do you still have the Kia? Tell me you still we have the Kia. We don't have it anymore. Oh. Yeah, this was a long time ago. <laughs> and you should have given us the clip. Yes, I, I would, totally forgot. Sometimes I forget that, that we made that video. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice flashback because I'm totally seeing little kids dancing. Sorry, like kindergarten class. 
<laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's transition now to um, your professional journey. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when, when we talk to our students about pursuing their career and going to college and studying certain things, um, you know, it's always with a job in mind or a career in mind. So, so let's, uh, let's, let's flash back to you are now a college graduate. You have this degree. Um, so at that point, as a creative person, were you looking for, for jobs or were you looking for ways to continue being creative, as creative as you are? Like what, was your, like, what was your take after you graduated from your university program? Well, for me, it started while I was in college. So while I was in college, I had already started outside of school finding ways to make videos for people for money. So, and that's something that you guys can do like very early on. Everyone needs videos, right? All the restaurants need reels for their Instagram, all the hair salons, all the uh, car places, like everybody needs some content. So if you can find a way that, hey, I can make a cool video for this barber shop, they're gonna pay you like $500 or more. So while I was in college, I needed to support myself because I didn't have like family that would put me through college and I actually had to help my family back in Cuba. So I started doing videos with whatever I could do. And usually other people that make video in your town, they need people to come with them and shoot. So like right now we're here, we're filming. My brother CJ, he's in the back like operating. So whenever you're gonna do a, a video gig, you need more, more than just one person. So the other guys or girls that are shooting either weddings or they're shooting like regular portraits, and it goes with pictures and videos, they always need help. So I started doing that, and then I started my own production company, and then I started like hiring people. While I was in college, I would, like I had class, so I couldn't go shoot something. So I would hire someone to go film, and then I would get paid from the company. I would pay them for filming, and then I would pay another friend to edit the video, and then I had a little bit of money that was left for me. So I started doing that while I was in college. So after college, I didn't have to look for a job. I was my own, I was self-employed. So I had my own production company and I was like trying to do things on my own. Now, if you guys are thinking of getting a job, then we probably need to get more specific so I can give you actual advice depending on what it is that you actually want. But usually the route is you have to learn skills that make you valuable for a company. So in this world of like media and content creation and all that, you usually have people who know how to like use the camera and they're really good at that, or people that know how to use the computer to edit, they're really good at that. And then you might have people who do a mix. So I would say you need to try to find from those two things, what do you like the most? And then figure out how do you get better than anyone else? And how do you get everyone to think that you're better than anyone else at doing that specific thing. That would allow you to level up. It would allow you to have people calling you all the time to do that one thing. So I don't know, is anyone here interested in like working in, um, make, in a, having a job that has to do with making videos? You're thinking about it? Yeah, you? So do you like to be like working with the cameras or working with the editing? Oh, the editing. The editing. So it, you can start right now learning how to do as much as you can by going online and learning how to edit. And you can probably find jobs online on different websites and with people that you know, so you can edit. I'm actually always looking for editors. So that's a skill that if you get better and better at that, you can definitely find a job. I'd, there are so many companies that would hire. So. Thank you. Um, and, and you know, as young people you, who are probably thinking about jobs, um, the next question is, did you ever have any internships or jobs? Uh, it, it sounds like you self-employed and you were very resourceful mm -hmm. in, you know, creating your company. Was it still X, uh, Red Axe? Red Axe, yeah. So Red Axe has been in business since you were in college? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so you really didn't, do, did you do internships or? I didn't do internships, I, but I did work with other companies. So 
What happens in media usually is, like I was telling you guys, you have a gig or a project and you need a crew for that specific project and then everyone kind of goes on their own. So there's a lot of freelancing that happens unless you work specifically for a production company or a corporate company that has a media department. Uh, you can do a lot of work as a freelancer with different companies at the same time, which is really interesting because instead of having like one job that is boring and you hate going to that same job every day, you can have, okay, on Monday, I'm gonna go and do a video for this car company. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to go film at the zoo. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to shoot uh, cars again, but we're gonna go to the desert and do a cool shoot for a brand. And then Friday, you're gonna do something related with fashion. So it's very, it's very fun. Like I think that's also something that I really like about my job. You have a lot of variety and you can work on a lot of different industries and you can travel a lot of places too. So it's really cool. The freedom sounds beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Rather beautiful than being tied down. Yes. As long as you're able to come up with the next client and the next client and the next client. So you do have freedom, but you are risking your like balance in your life and you're risking the stability of having a job at one single place. Now the, the beauty of it is that you can decide and do both or you can pick, okay, I really want to have a, a steady job. So you look for a job in one company that you can stay there and make money there. Or if you want the freedom and you want to take the risk, you can go the other route. Either way, you can be successful and and make enough money and enjoy what you do. Sounds like you need to hustle, right? Yes. No matter what. Yes. If, if you want a certain lifestyle, a certain career, a certain route, yeah. you got to put in the work, right? Um, and so what was the most challenging aspect about breaking into the film industry? Like, how did you um, fund your film, your documentary? Like, was that your breakthrough moment in the film industry? That is not my breakthrough moment. So I don't think there is like one single moment that you can say, oh, that was my breakthrough. It's kind of a gradual, this project leads to this project, to this project, to this project. And then after a while, you're able to navigate and get in. So in my case, after college, I moved to Atlanta because there was a lot of production happening in Atlanta. And I don't know if you guys know, but uh, like the Spider-Man movies are shot in Atlanta, all the Avenger movies are shot in Atlanta, Venom, like there's so much film production that goes on in Atlanta because they have tax incentives and people go there and they can shoot a lot of movies and, and it's a good place to film. So that's why I went there first. And I started working as an office PA first and that's that was like my entry into working in big projects uh, I worked on a movie for Warner Brothers and I was just like, you know, the kid in the office making sure that the printer was working and that we had coffee and going to the grocery store and buying things for the producers uh, and the people in the office. So as part of the office staff, that was kind of my break in moment where I was actually employed on this production for Warner Brothers. It was a movie with Melissa McCarthy and I learned so much, but that only lasted like two months and then the movie was done filming and then it's like you're back on the streets. So then you have to make sure that you're making connections while you're working on that gig to get hired on another movie and another TV show. So then I went on to do another TV show and then that led to another TV show and that's how I became a location scout and location manager and then I worked my way up to work in that side of the production, going to all the places to find the locations to film the, the shows and I learned a lot there. And while all of that was happening, I was working on my own movie that it was my own passion project. So I funded that with some of my own money and money from friends that wanted to make that movie. But that was done completely independently. And while I was, you know, while I was the assistant on this big movie, I was the director of my own movie. And I think that's kind of what you have to do if you want to be a filmmaker. You need to find ways to make money and be as close as possible to Hollywood and the film industry. And then you have to push and try to get your own projects done, you know? That, that's great advice. And that's question number eight. Like, what advice would you give someone who wants to become a director or a cinematographer? So I heard um, getting to know people, mm -hmm. making connections. 
and um, working on your passion on your own time, right? Is, is there yes. anything else? Like, what advice could these kids? The other thing I would add to that, if you want to be a director or a cinematographer, is you need to try to work not only on your projects, but you have to work on bigger projects that are done with the studio, within the studio system. And usually you get to those through friendships. So be as intentional as possible to make new friends that like films and like to do that kind of work. And usually through them, you're gonna get closer to having an opportunity to work on a big TV show or a big movie. Even if you're an assistant like carrying the cables, then I, then another thing that I want people to know, especially young people, is there's, a, there's kind of a system to work in the camera department and you have to join a union that regulates who gets hired and how all of that works. The directors also have a guild that you have to be part of that guild to be able to be hired on major motion pictures. And all of that has a process that you can follow. But at the same time, you need to be outside of that process working on your passion projects, especially for you guys starting out. The main thing I would recommend is get together with some friends and like if a friend is doing music or someone wants to be a DJ or, or someone wants to be a model or something like that and you want to create media or you want to create content, work with them to shoot the little music video, work with them to shoot their like fashion film. Whatever you can do to work on these little projects is going to help you to get practice and see what you like. Maybe you don't really like to direct, maybe you don't really like to work with a camera. But that way you can test it, try it out, and then from that you can learn. Thank you. And so let's say um, I'm dead set on becoming a director. And like you said, you might want to be something different. But let's say I want to be a director. What, what skills does a director need to have? Like if, if I want to direct anything from a small project to like a Marvel blockbuster or mm -hmm. Star Wars, like, like what skills are imperative to have as a director? So there are two camps when it comes to directing. There are directors that are very technical, so they're really good with the cameras, the angles, the visual effects, the editing. And there are directors that are more focused on the acting and the writing. So they care more about what's on the text, how can I get the performance out of the actor. For me, I like to live in the middle because of the things that I like. So I would say, if you want to be a director, try to think about what are the movies that you really, really like, and are those movies big special effects movies, big blockbusters, or maybe they're just smaller movies but that you connect with the emotions. That is going to allow you to understand, okay, I like this side of it, then focus on that and try to do a short project where you can shine with that type of skill. So if you really like fancy camera stuff, come up with an idea where you can really show off like how good you're with the camera. Or if you like the drama or like have your friends act and be crying and stuff like that, then come up with a little story that focuses on that and try to do that well. At the beginning, I wouldn't try to put both together because it's very difficult. So I would recommend when you're starting your first couple projects, just focus on, on the things that you're really strong at. Thank you. And, and as a director, your job is to tell a story, right? You, you develop a story visually. And there's so many, so many components that come into a film. So how do you develop a story? Like when you have a project and you're like, okay, I'm going to create this, how do you approach developing a story? For me, I try to simplify with what is the one thing that I want to say or what is the emotion that I want people to feel. So for example, with Literary Inc, I had many directions that I could go. So my job as a director was to simplify and streamline what I wanted to say. So I had the story with my friend of coming out of Cuba, coming to America, becoming a tattoo artist. So that was a, a strong piece of the film for me. And the other side of the story was Harry Potter and tattoos and the combination of this like really cool worlds. So telling the story of this convention with all these people obsessed with Harry Potter and like 
people getting big tattoos of Harry Potter, so telling that story. So that's how I developed that one. And with documentaries, you do a lot of work of filming, filming, and capturing as much as possible. So for example, that film, we filmed for about two weeks, and then it took me nine months to edit down the first cut of the movie. So with documentaries, that's the process. When you're doing uh, narrative, scripted films is the opposite. You work a long time finessing the script, and then you get to pro production, you shoot, and then you do the editing, but it's way faster. All the work is up front. So that's how I approach it. I think about feeling. What is the feeling that I want people to sense when they're watching the movie? And how can I simplify the story so I don't get distracted and I can focus on one single thing? If you can say one single thing it's, and get that communicated, it's way stronger than saying 10 things but nobody can really understand or remember it. So simple will help your audience make the connection. Yep. Whereas if it's too much or too convoluted, you'll lose your audience. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and are you ever selective about which projects you choose or which projects you take on? And if you are selective, like how do you go about deciding, okay, I'm going to do this? I honestly have a problem because I want to do all the projects and I want to say yes to everything. So I'm not very good at that yet. I'm working on it. When I'm trying to be selective, I'm trying to think, does this matter if I'm going to choose a project that I want to tell? Because you're going to spend so much time working on that that you might as well like it or enjoy it. If, if it's boring or if it's like annoying to you, you shouldn't do it. The other side of it is money. Am I going to get paid doing this? Like if I'm going to make a lot of money doing this project, even if I don't like it as much, sometimes you have to do things for, you have to do projects for money because money is important and we need to make money to be able to co continue with our lifestyle, pay for the things that we need, and also so you can afford to do the other projects that you love even when they're not going to pay you. Absolutely. Um, and next slide, please. And so, um, when you are on a new project and you're about to engage, and let's say you are the director, um, how do you approach communicating your vision? Because you have a vision. As the director, the creative director, you have a vision. How do you go about communicating with all those people involved in your project? So it all depends on how people take in information and what's their style. So you try to figure out, okay, for you, like what's the best way? Do you like to read or do you like to look at images? Uh, for the next person, like do you like to listen to sounds or you like conversation or do you prefer looking at a specific plan shot by shot? So for me, I really like images. So showing images helps me a lot. So I would put little pitches together where I'm trying to show images of what the character is supposed to look like, her clothes, and what is the visual style of that project. That helps me a lot. Uh, but you kind of have to find with the people that you're working with what is the thing that helps them and then try to do that so you can be more effective. How, how large are your, your groups that you usually have to manage? So it depends. At the studio that we work on right now, our production team is about, it's less than 10 people. Uh, when I was working on as a location scout or location manager, the whole crew was about 150 people. That's the average between 100 and 150 people wow. is the average on a feature film or a Hollywood TV show. And there I was only managing, I was interacting with a lot of those people, but our, your core team is always going to be small, but then you interact with a lot of other teams. And that's another thing that is really fun about filmmaking. It's really fun, but also very challenging. You're not doing the project on your own. So there's many departments. You have the people that take care of the cameras, the people that take care of the lighting, the people that take care of the location, the people that take care of the money, the food, the wardrobe, the actors, the writers. Like It's a lot of people, and you have to find your place. How can you be the best at what you do? But then you have to be cool with people. Like, and that allows you, that's the fun thing about filmmaking. If 
nobody likes you, it's going to be way harder for you to convince them to do something that will benefit the project and it will benefit you. So you have to learn how to win people over, how to be kind and try your best at all times to be nice to people because you don't know. They might be acting in a certain way because they had a tough day in their side of the world, you know, in, in their life. So trying to find finding empathy and trying to communicate in a way that is, you know, kind always goes a long way. And some other times you need authority. Other times you need to be more strict and say, no, this is what needs to happen and we need to do it this way because X, Y, and Z. And be able to hold your ground and understand that you standing up for yourself and in that moment for your idea is going to benefit the project long term. Yeah, because as a director, it's your job to keep all 100 people in line with that vision that you have to make, right? Mm -hmm. So you might inspire other people to do something else their way or this way, but no, you have to keep them in line, right, as the director. That's why the title of director. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. So let, let's, let's talk a little bit about how that even happens. Because, you know, when you're managing money, resources, people, deadlines, um, what's your what's your time management like like how do you manage your time and so that you don't burn out so that you have enough energy and stamina to keep going for the length of the project how do you manage that time personally yeah, that's very challenging usually when you are filming like the days that you have filmed you manage it the way that you can so you can survive on big, big projects, the assistant director is the person in charge of managing the shooting schedule and how things are going to be organized. So you as the director, you don't have to think all the time on the management side of the production. And you also have the line producer and associate producers and supervising producers who are keeping in track all of these changes that happen during production. For you guys, when you start, it's going to be vital that you use your calendar. So using Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, whatever type of calendar that you can, dominating that and making sure that you write things down and usually try to give yourself extra time. You might think it's going to take an hour. It's probably going to be an hour and a half to two hours. And with time, you're going to get better at actually projecting how much time and money a project is going to take. So for me, I do everything on my calendar and I try to communicate like with the people that I work with. We have different calendars for different things. Now I have an assistant that helps me managing things and appointments and things like that. And using technology, I guess, is the main thing. The other thing that I would recommend uh, for you guys, like if you're going to go into a very stressful like work career, Try to find what works for you. Every person is going to be different. For you, you might be great in the morning, uh, and that's when you can get work done. Or you like to sleep in, and, and you want to wake up later. So find what works for you, and then make sure that you are optimizing your own program and your own way of doing things. But if you don't like to do things a certain way, just because this guy is saying that he wakes up every day at four in the morning to get work done, doesn't mean that you have to do it. As long as you get the work done. So, so you have to be disciplined and you have to be organized. Yep. Right, to manage. Um, I'm gonna skip this next question and because I see we're almost approaching three o'clock and I wanna give you guys time to answer so, or to give some questions. Um, CJ, can we go to the next slide, please? Oh, no, one more. Back. Um, so I'm just wondering who or what inspires you or motivates your creativity? So For, we know you like Harry Potter. Yeah. What else? What, what inspires your creativity? Music inspires me a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times I'll be driving and I listen to a song and that puts like a feeling or an idea for a scene in my head. Uh, so that, that helps me a lot. Watching films is always like I went to see Avatar, uh, the second Avatar, and when I came out of that film, I was like, oh my God, like, this is so amazing, this is so cool, like, I loved it, like, I was so in it, and that inspires me to 
try to accomplish that level of like filmmaking that inspires me a lot. And then working with writers, uh, writers that have scripts that when you read it, like you're drawn to it. I think everyone has their own thing, you know, like you might watch a TV show and that might inspire you to, oh, I would love to do a TV show like that. Or you might watch a music video and you might say, oh, I want to do a music video like that, but I want to take a little piece of that and mix it with this thing that I saw over here. And I want to take, I want to make it like graffiti, but I also want to add neon lights to it. So I think it just comes to you. And I'm sure you guys have your own like sources of inspiration that you watch cool things on TikTok or whatever, and then you want to replicate that. So. And, and the next question is, what was the last movie or show that you watched that really made an impression on you? So was it Avatar or have you seen something else that really just so grabbed you? Right now I'm watching another TV show that my brother got me onto it. Uh, it's called Peaky Blinders on Netflix. And Pinky? Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Like, oh, Peaky. <laughs> like Peek Boop? Yes. So is this show about three brothers that are gangsters in the early 1900s in England and they're terrible people <laughs> so they steal they kill other people they do all kinds of things but they have this side of family where they really value their family coming together and it's also a story of people who were like the bottom they're gypsies and it's like they're the worst class in society and the lead brother is trying to find ways to level up and make sure that the family can come out of that stigma and become respectable and have respectable businesses and be recognized by the prime minister and, and all the high up people. So it's done with impeccable writing, beautiful uh, cinematography. Like it's the whole package, Piggy Blanders. It's really interesting. It sounds really interesting. I'm going to check it out. And it's interesting that you even mentioned that because it leads into my final question. And then you guys can ask after, after this question, OK? Um, so our, the name of our program is Inclusive Creative Media Magnet, right? Um, because we know that Hollywood is changing. The stories that are being put out there are more inclusive of minorities and people who generally haven't had their stories, you know, put on the big screen. So what do you think the future of Latinos and other minorities is in film and media? What do you think that looks like in the future? I think the future for everyone is so promising because now all it takes is for you guys to take your phone, write down on a piece of paper, like, I want the scene to do this, this, and this. You can shoot it with your phone, and then you can edit it, and you can learn. So everyone is having a chance at creating things. And at the end of the day, the best storytellers are going to go to the top. So it, trust me, no one is saying, no, you cannot make that movie if you are of this race or that race, or no, you cannot be in Hollywood if you look like this. In my experience, everyone is trying to make cool stories. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter who's telling them. As long as it is a good story that entertains people, that inspires people, we're all about it. So don't be afraid. It's always going to be hard because making movies is really hard. So if you want to make videos, if you want to start a YouTube channel, if you want to start a TikTok account, whatever you want to do, Sit down with your friends, come up with some cool ideas, and make something cool that we can all enjoy. Um, so at this point now, um, I want to open it up to you. Would you like to ask Axel any questions? Does anybody have any questions that maybe arose as you were listening? Um, just raise your hand, and he'll ask. He'll answer. Calling. My favorite part is that little moment where. Man, like the actor is on point, the lighting is on point, like everything kind of comes together. That is really like, I enjoyed that a lot. And I think watching it, watching the film later with other people, that, but the, those moments are so small, man. Like it's, it's really hard to, to have a lot of it because you work so hard to shoot for a little bit and then you only shoot for, for a little bit. And then you have to do so much editing to show it to people. But yeah, those are my two favorite moments. Was your high school system in Cuba different than the one in the United 
completely different. Yeah, very, very different. Uh, we had our classrooms where about 30 people uh, and we didn't have any of the nice things that you guys have here. Like we didn't have no auditorium, no sports program, no media program. You just go to school, you have a bunch of classes that are super boring and that was it. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> For me, in my personal case, because I came from another country, it did help me a lot being in a classroom, learning how to write, learning the uh, kind of the American way of everything. Because when I came, like, I went to Walmart and I got lost. Like, I didn't know how to use a credit card. I didn't know how to use a calendar on a phone. I didn't know anything. So to me, it helped me a lot. Depending on the career that you're following, for film specifically, if you can afford to go to one of the top five film schools in the country, yes, 100% I would do that because the relationships that you're going to make there will, those people are also going to work in film and there's so much that comes out of networking and, and your friends helping you that is definitely necessary. Out of that, if you're gonna go to a film school in Iowa, I don't think you should do it. You should take that money, move to LA, and then work your way up here with the amount of money that you're going to spend for a film degree in that setting. Now, if you want to do media and you just want to create videos, work as a videographer and like create content for marketing agencies and things like that, kind of the same. I would take that money that you're going to spend and buy some equipment, go on YouTube, get some online classes. In, in about six months, you can be proficient in any editing software and working with any camera. But it all depends on what's your style, how do you learn. If you need to have someone like pushing you and you need to have like the system, the structure of the school, go for it. If you're a little bit of a rebel and like me, you didn't want to sit in class all day, then it might help you to go and do things Hmm. I think your future is more in your hands than in the hands of a degree or a school. It's all up to you. If you have that desire, hey, if you can afford it and you can go to a film school, it's better than not going. But if you don't see yourself going through school that many years, for example, none of my film jobs ask me what film school I went to before they hire me. Oh, wow. So I don't know if that helps or not. Now, the fact that I have a bachelor's degree helps me if I want to go get a job at a regular company. It shows that I did some schooling, but to make movies, it's like Steven Spielberg wouldn't even get accepted into film school like when he first tried for it. So I think the degree, going to the school will change your future because you're going to a different place. Uh, but if you can find a way to do it on your own, I would skip the four years and like try to go into film as soon as possible. Um, how can I convince my parents that I want to like study the filmmaking the film? Uh, what would they like you to do? Um, doc the doctor. And do you want to be a doctor? No. So what I would, your parents really want you to succeed. They really want you to do well in life. So I would try to find a way, depending how your parents take in information, I would try to find a way to show them, hey, you want me to do this degree so I can make this amount of money. If I go with this career, I can make this amount of money. And maybe you can do a deal with them where, let me go and pursue this for two years. And if I'm able to make X amount of money during that time, then you can see that I'm doing well. If at that time I don't do anything and, and I'm not showing any progress, then I will go back and go to school because you can always go back and go to school, right? So that's just an idea. Again, like that's a very personal question. I think that's something that you need to think a lot about. And I'm pretty sure your parents are doing 
they're recommending that because they really want you to do well in life and have an amazing future. So I wouldn't say, oh, forget about your parents, what they're saying. No, 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 no. Like respect your parents and they really want the best for you. So try to meet them with the same level of concern. And if you can show them that, hey, as a doctor, I'm going to follow this path and this is what's at the end. If I do media, I can follow this path and this is what's at the end. Because if your dad sees that, well, you might go into this career and in two years you could be making 100K a year working in media, maybe they, they will be happy about that and they don't think that you need to go 10 years into med school to make 200K. So. Any other questions? I think I was a teenager when the first one came out and I was like oh my god like I could have believe I wish I could have gone to Hogwarts if that was a thing I would have gone to it so yeah I think the first one was beautiful film the story the characters everything is like so cool and then it got kind of darker and deeper and like so the last one is also like very dramatic so yeah those films are definitely like one, some of my favorites. I think, I think the sooner you understand that there is no end goal and you learn how to enjoy that process and then you're going to have a lot of little victories that you're going to enjoy. So if you remind yourself of that, that dream job, it's not that once you get it, it's it won't, that satisfaction won't last very long and you're gonna have so much struggles and everyone that has your dream job also has a big bag of like stress and things that they have to do with that job. So my advice will be learn to enjoy the little things, the little win, like the, the everyday, oh, today I got better at this, today I met this person, today I was able to like visit this place. Like if you treasure those things, you're gonna enjoy life so much better. And I think that goes to not just your job, but also your family and like everything that you want in life. If you learn to enjoy the little things, it gets really fun. In your opinion, what do like, what makes, you know, the I think when they're based on something that it was like a real experience. And when you think about us, like our lives, we all have a mom or dad, or we have a lack or, of a mom or a dad. Uh, we all have like brothers or sisters, or we don't have brothers or sisters. We all want something, we have to get that dream job or get to that super cool place. We all share kind of the same. So as long as you can simplify your character and make it want or need something that we all want or need, I think that makes it so much relatable. And if you can add a, a little bit of your own experience, you know, if you experience something that was interesting and important to you, I'm pretty sure that 25% of people in this room already had an experience kind of similar to that. So the moment you put that on a story, we're all going to relate to it because we also went through it. And I think that's the beauty of movies. Like you can watch a movie now that is from like, 25 years ago and you're still going to like it and you're still going to get why the characters are trying to do this or that and you're going to fall in love with it. So that's what I would do. I think watching, watching movies and watching the interviews, like there's some interviews with Spielberg, Tarantino, uh, where you see that those people that you put up in a pedestal they also like had struggles, they had no money to shoot their movies, their family told them that they were crazy for wanting to do that. Like listening to those stories from other people, those have inspired me. And I remember there is one interview with Jerry Bruckheimer, who's a huge producer. He did Pirates of the Caribbean, like he has done so many movies. And later on in on his career, he was talking about the fact that he was trying to get a movie made with Tom Cruise and he couldn't get the money and nobody believed that that movie was going to get made. And it was like the biggest movie star in the world with the biggest movie producer in the world. And I remember thinking, man, if, if everyone is saying no to those people and they understand that that is normal, 
then why should people give me money? I'm only a kid like, with a crazy dream and I haven't made any movies. So that was something early on that every time I feel like, oh, this is so hard, then I remember, hey, it's hard for everyone. Just enjoy that you're even in, in the fight, you know? Enjoy that you even have a, a chance to be healthy enough and crazy enough that you can go and try to make movies, so. My least favorite? when the sound from the interviews that I recorded were garbage, and then I lost it. <laughs> that was my least favorite. I'm really bad with sound. I'm trying to get better with that. And also, some of the least favorites has been working with people that are really mean. And, but it's, it's a very high stress environment. There's a lot of money involved, and you have people that have no sleep, no real like good nutrition or food, they're stressed out of their mind and they just hate their lives. And then you come with a problem and they just like curse you out and like treat you like garbage. Those moments were really, really hard. I think that moment right before you get to film that so many things have to come together for you to be able to get the people that you need, the equipment that you need at the time that you need them be ready to ask them the right questions, the lighting is not working. Like right before you're about to start, that's the most stressful time. And then the, in the editing, when you cannot figure out a way to make the puzzle fit, then it's not as stressful, but it's very de defleeting and you feel like garbage. Like you feel like I suck at this, like I'm so bad at this. But then if you keep working on it a little bit more, it usually gets better. Uh, I'm still trying to get better. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think those are the most stressful moments. Um, what are some other things you do in your life other than your job, like hobbies and things? Uh, mm, I don't have that many hobbies. I think watching movies, I, I really like watching movies. Uh, recently I started uh, learning how to fight. Uh, so I'm, I've been training Krav Maga and like getting push, punched by your friends is kind of fun. In the face? Uh, no. In the face, yes, and all over your body too. So yeah, I think that is one of the things that I've been doing recently that I really enjoy. Oof, it depends on the day, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I mean, I can be very difficult to deal with too, so I, I understand both sides. So you have to think of what is it that they want and how is it that they need to be communicated to? Because I think those are the two things. If they want something that you cannot give them, then you, you can't really fix it. Now, if they are getting information in a way that they don't understand you, that can be fixed. So I think with people that are very difficult to work with, I have learned that's the best way to go about it. Because if you can figure out what it is that they actually want, and then how do you get to that result, then it works. Or they're just not listening to the right words, or you're not being able to communicate. The moment you take ownership of that, then you have the power. Because you're going to find, like working in media, you're going to find so many strong personalities and people who push, 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 and they're usually successful. So you need to learn how to deal with that, otherwise you're not gonna uh, move forward. So remember that it's your responsibility to find a way to win them over whoever they are by using whatever means you can devise to convince them or to influence them or to give them the results that they need so you can get the results that you need so the project can move ahead. Can I ask a question? You said that um, nobody ever asked you about your college degree. Like, nobody asked what your degree was. So it made me think, when you are in a business meeting or maybe an interview, what do you come in with? Like, is it your re if it's not your resume, you know, what do you come prepared with to, to pitch or sell or, or to show them, this is my work, this is what I've done? Like, how do you present that? When, when you do need to you know, partner with somebody. So is this a meeting to apply for a job or a meeting to do a project? So it, it would 
for both. For both, yeah. Yeah, so when you're going to apply for a job, you do have your resume, so if you had a college education, you would put it there. If you don't have it, you just put what experience you have in the real world, and then you try to convince the person, hey, I didn't go to college, but I, in that time, I was doing this and this and this and this, which is really hard for you guys because you're young. That's what I was saying. Try to work on whatever you can work now so you get that experience. So in this day and age, are people referring potential partners or bosses to an Instagram account or a YouTube channel? Yeah. Is that what to... Is that like your new digital resume type of thing? Yes, in media, that's what works. So in for film specifically, when you're trying to do projects with other people, we have a website called IMDb. I don't know if you guys know about it, but on IMDb, you list the credits of the projects that you have worked on. So when you Google my name, my IMDb page comes up right away. When you click on it, you can see, oh, he has been producing things for the last 10 years. So they, he has worked with this person, this person, this project, this project. And that's your new resume in this industry. But it's different if you go to like a company and you want to apply for a job, then something else happens there. And so people are usually going to Google you, right? Or search for you. Or, so you want to be discoverable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, that's how we that's connected because you, you <laughs> found me searching yeah. on social media for yeah. filmmaking. Yeah. So that's another side of like, you guys know better than anybody. Like when you meet someone, you search their IG to see like, what's up, right? So like you can start building right now, you can build your own IG for your professional side where you can show like the things that you can do. That's why it's so important that we are aware of what we post, right? <laughs> because if it is posted on the internet, it stays on the internet type of thing, right? So now that we are propelling forward in this, in this world, very digital world, you kind of need to be conscientious of that, right? Like, in the future, if you want to work for Warner Brothers or Universal, right, and they search for your work, and yeah, you have a great IMB or IMDb. Sorry, IMDb. You have a really nice Instagram, but down at the bottom is <laughs> that one thing you posted when you were a freshman in college, right? So, so it, it's important, right? Your social media, your profiles. Um, what would you advise for them to start building now? For sure. A YouTube channel or an Instagram or like what should they have? What should they start building now? And I think we'll wrap up soon. I would start by building the platform that you like the most and that you spend the most time on. So like if you love IG, then build your IG account so it shows like the things that you can do and your work and all that. If you spend a lot of time on YouTube, then maybe start a YouTube channel. Like what the platform doesn't matter as much. I would just pick the one that you really like so you're excited about like making more videos or more pictures and like building that platform. Thank you and thank you guys for having me. Like I enjoy talking to like young people and like I feel young still even though I'm old but I really appreciate you guys being respectful, listening and you had so, so many amazing questions so I, I really appreciate you guys having me. Like, yeah, let's clap. Let's clap it up. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Thank you.